Oh yeah, boys and girls, this is the life. Now, there's a, a whole bunch of teams in action this weekend, but they're in the FA Cup, boys. But we're out here getting some sun under the Portuguese spotlight, boys and girls. Well, next up for us, it is free scoring QPR at Ewa Park in the old midweek crunch clash. Can we continue where we left off? Well, we'll take a little look next. Hey, Danny. Danny, stick a bit of sunscreen on my back, will you? right folks back once again with another match review this time we're looking that's right folks back once again with another match preview this time we're looking back that's right folks back once again with another match preview this time we're looking forward to Blackburn Rovers up against QPR at Ewa Park and we'll get to that in just one second now if you are new to the channel where the heck have you been boys smash your subscribe button keep your bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers related championship related world football we're all here Underwall Rooskies. Now, I have mentioned it on a few other videos, but I'm going to mention it anyway. Got some new patrons in the gang, boys and girls. Yes, that is right. You can become exclusive VIP members of the gang, just like these boys. Tom Beresford is now a patron. Tom Clark is a patron. Of course, the legend, John Spurn, is also a patron. He's been there for a while now. But uh, yes, you can join the VIP gang and get exclusive shout-outs, names and lights, and all that kind of good stuff. Just check out the link in the old description down below. It's patreon.com forward slash Rovers if you want to be in there. Now, folks, let's get going and take a little look at the match in a bit more detail, shall we? So, let's take a look at the match in a bit more detail, shall we? It does take place right here at the Promised Land. That's right, Ewood Park. QPR, the visitors. Free scoring QPR, should I say. The match takes place on the 28th of January. Uh, still managed by Mark Warburton. Not the bread, but the gaffer. That's right. Uh, you know what? At the start of the season, I didn't believe. I didn't believe. I still kind of don't really believe. They are very good to watch if you're a, a neutral, scoring a lot of goals. Um, but I just don't know where they're going to end up. They could score all these kind of crazy amount of score lines and still get up in a bit of a relegation dogfight. That's the championship, folks. Uh, that season, they finished 19th. A danger man for me. Could be a whole... There's, there's, there's two or three guys in the mix. But I'm going to go with Bright Osai Samuel. I uh, did watch him against Leeds and he looked very, very deadly. Uh, picked up from Blackpool. Local team just down the road. Why weren't we involved? Why weren't we involved? Maybe he just wanted a bit too much money for, for the prospect. Their record against Rovers played 49 times. Uh, they beat us 13 times. We've drawn 14. And we've uh, Rovers actually picked up 22 victories as well. Um, they did play early in the season. And they won quite convincingly. 4-2 was the final score. Um, last season, though, we beat, we beat them home and away. Get back in there. I'm not done yet. We beat them home and away. 2-1 uh, winners at, uh, at Ewood. And 1-0 winners. Sorry, 2-1 winners at, uh, at Ewood Park. 1-0 win at their place. Some, no, the other way around. Other way around. 2-1 win at their place. 1-0 win at Ewa Park. This season, we've already played them, as I said, 5th of October. And, of course, it says the 25th of, of Jan. Of course, the FA Cup has put a kibosh to that bad boy. And, uh, obviously, they're in action. We are not. Um, so, let's take a look now at the starting 11s. Uh, here we go, boys. Uh, I'm going to go with the same side, I believe. The same side that beat uh, Sheffield Wednesday, convincingly, 5-0. Uh, Walton between, two, between six. Bell, Arabayo, Lennon and Nyambe making it the back four. Nyambe for me. Right now, I think Nyambe is is best player we got on the pitch. Him and Lenehan, you know, uh, forming a nice sort of uh, partnership at the back. Still not the, not, not, not the completest believer in Amari Bell. He does have some good games. He's got the ability, um, but it just he doesn't show that that uh, that vigour that Nyambi does on the right-hand side. He doesn't come back as quick. He doesn't, you know, just maybe just in the, a little time to settle in or something like that. But uh, pressure is on him because, because you know, there's rumours of us looking at possible left-backs and there's no Cunningham now. Williams is, is knocking on the doorstep a little bit, trying to get him back into the squat, into the side somehow. On the flip side, Nyambi is cruising at the moment on the right-hand side. Only got Bennett for competition. But if you play Nyambi, he is our, our one of our, our, our major threats down the right. So he's got pace. Does got some skill and he can uh, he can cut inside nice and easy into the defensive midfield slots. Travis, another keen player for us in the future as well. As long as we can keep a hold of him, um, he's become going to be a very sellable asset in a year or two uh, uh, time. Once uh, the other Championship clubs and Premier League clubs take notice of what he does, what he provides, he might need a little bit more meat on those bones, but uh, still good. Obviously, Downing obviously uh, been a surprise asset to us this season with his creativity, passing um, and assists and all that kind of good stuff. Um, Strong Rothwell with Holtby in the middle and big Sam Gallagher up top. Yep, uh, who do maybe broken this time around? Obviously, scoring late on against Sheffield Wednesday. Hopefully, he can kick on now and make it back to back games on the score sheet. That would be fantastic. As for QPR, gonna go with Kelly between six, Wallace, Masterson, Hall, and ex rover Todd Kane at right back. 
Who, who, ha who hasn't he played for? He is a journeyman. That is a traditional journeyman right there. Obviously, for on the books, formerly at Chelsea. He's played up and down the flipping country. Uh, Amos at uh, defensive midfield slot alongside Cameron, the Americano. Eze chair and Osai Samuel in that trio there. And I've got Jordan Heigl up top. It could be Naki Wells, but I don't know I don't know what his deal is. Um, has he been recalled by... Is it Burnley? Do, do, do they have rights on him? Or does, I can't remember. I think it's Burnley owned him. Um... But Bristol City are sniffing. They're trying to do a deal, get Brownhill involved and all this kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, so we shall see uh, who leads the line for Cooper. Regardless, if it is Naki Wells or if it's Jordan Hagel, they're both double-digit strikers this season. Let's take a look at those double-digit numbers now for you. Uh, Dakarina leads the way with 10 goals for us. Obviously out for the season. Armstrong, though, it's getting closer to double digits. He could become the uh, the top goal scorer for, this, for the club. But maybe Gallagher will have a little... He'll, he'll now reach into third gear and we'll start seeing some more goals from him. Downing's in there with uh, three goals to his name. Lennon, Bennett and Travis uh, lead the way with uh, in a, in an unlikely bad column. It's the yellows. Then it has seven. Ben has six. Travis has five. Cunningham has four. He's no longer with us, though. Uh, Dacarino with the one and only red. He won't be getting any more. He won't be getting any more goals, either. As for the goals for QPR, Naki Wells leads the way with 14. Jordan Heigel has got 10. Eze's got 10. Asai Sam has got five, as well. As for their discipline, Cameron leads the way there with eight yellows. Heigel's got seven. Asai Sam has got six. Man has got six, as well. They've got two reds to name. Wallace and Barbe. Now, Barbe, for me, I thought it was going to be the, the player of the year, or the signing of the season. Um... Big pickup bomb from Brentford, but what, what, what's his story? What's his story, QPR fans? Why is he not in the uh, starting 11s these days? He's suspended. I don't know. Let me know. Uh, moving on, let's take a look at the last five results or six results. What have we got? Two more. Five results for each side here. First and foremost, the Rovers, of course, obviously coming into this hot on the heels of that impressive 5 0 away victory against Sheffield Wednesday. We don't do that often, folks. We don't do that often. So that is it, QPR. The, uh, the, uh, the benchmark has been set. We just destroyed a 5 0. What have you got? You're going to play them next in the FA Cup. Can you do the same? Well, you know what? You probably might because you do score goals. Um, that's one thing you do score uh, is, is, you know, you're, you're pretty savvy with the, with finding the ball in the back of the net. Um, as for uh, before that, uh, we did drill with Preston at Ewood uh, Park, losing to Birmingham, 10-man Birmingham. And you've got a bit of a shambles there. Uh, also losing to Forest in a game which probably could have went either way. And also against Huddersfield where we absolutely poop. As for QPR coming into this on the back of a 1-0 win against Leeds, obviously they're going to be in action uh, in the weekend anyway against, against Sheffield Wednesday. But uh, we'll talk more about their fixtures in a second. They did lose to Brentford 3-1, but they did beat Swansea in the FA Cup as well, 5-1. Also beaten Cardiff 6-1 uh, as well, and before losing to uh, Hull at uh, the end of the year. So these are the next five matches for Rovers. Uh, after after QPR, we take on Middlesbrough. That's on the 1st of Feb in a very, very jam-packed February. We also take on uh, Fulham at uh, Ewood Park and also Hull City back-to-back -back games at Ewood Park in a very, very busy uh, stretch. Three day, three games in, in a course of like seven or eight days there. Then it's down to the Valley as we take on Charlton and then it's on to get uh, a back-to-back -back away games and then we're off to Brentford. Uh, David Raya, Rendezvous. Uh, that's right. As for QPR, obviously Sheffield Wednesday this weekend at Loftus Road or wherever they call it these days. Um... So yeah, can you can you uh, can you add to the tally? They scored five. They conceded five last time out. How many can you put past them? Uh, then they'll take on us. Then they'll take on Bristol City back at their own gaff before back-to-back -back away games uh, in the middle of November against Huddersfield and Swansea City. Uh, moving forward, let's take a look at the form book now, shall we? Um, obviously, this is uh, this is the home form for Rovers and away form for QPR. We'll come into this unbeaten in at least six games for Rovers at home. Uh, drawing the last three, though. We've got to turn those draws into wins. Drawing against Preston and Birmingham. And, uh, and of, of course, uh, Bradley Dack's last game of the season, uh, 23rd of December, was the draw against Wigan. Still still not over at Sam Mosey, Morsey, whatever your pissing name is. The, uh, the flipping shithouse king of, of, of the North West. Uh, before that, though, three consecutive wins against Barnsley, Brentford and Derby uh, to make it a bit of a fortress at Ewood Park. Can we continue and get back to winning ways against QPR? We'll have to see. Their away form is not the greatest. Uh, just one win out of the past six games, losing to Brentford, Reading and Barnsley away from home. Uh, conceding quite a few goals as well. Conceding three against Brentford, five against Barnsley. Uh, and also losing to Fulham. They did pick up a draw against Derby and also, of course, beat our bogey side this season. And that is Birmingham 2-0 to the good at St. Andrews. I'm, I'm glad we're done with them now. We're down. We're done with Birmingham. Thank heavens for that. This is the form table overall. Uh, Rovers sitting down in 16th. It's actually quite bizarre, this. We're down in 16th. But when you see the home form and the away form tables um, separately, we're doing pretty shit hot. But we're down in uh, 16th. 
Uh, it's weird. Uh, Sheffield, uh, not Sheffield Wednesday. QPR are to 13th in the table, just one point better off than us. They've actually picked up seven points of a possible 18. Rovers picking up six out of a possible 18. Let's take a look at that home form now. We are flying high in fourth spot, 12 points out of a possible 18 in the last six games. QPR are in the 13th, but we're not really bothered about their home form. We want to know where they are in the away table. That's what we're looking at. So we're in fourth, which is decent. Uh, 12 points on the board. It is, this is weird. It is all weird. Um... And then when you look at the away form, we are third. We are third. We are fourth and third, but overall we are, what is it, 15th, 16th, something like that. How weird is that? Because our last, it's basically the last three matches is where it's all at. We have uh, only picked up one win in the past three away from home. Uh, whereas QPR, they are down in 20th spot. Uh, three defeats on the spin away from home. We already looked at those as well. Um, so, yeah, so that's, uh, that's the form table at the moment. Looking good. Uh, in in the, the grander scheme of things, we need to kind of turn those draws into wins and then maybe just maybe we can start to believe once again. Um, let's take a look at the last six, though, between the two sides and all competitions, all grounds. The record is good for Rovers. Played played four, one, uh, played six, one, four, drawn one and lost one. That, la that defeat was last time out at their place and it was earlier in the year in October. Uh, they turned us over 4-2. Goals from Naki Wells. Uh, Eze, Bright Samuel, and Jordan Heigl, the, the danger men, obviously. And then Bradley Dagg and Adam Armstrong get a couple of consolations for us. But before that, it was all Rovers. Uh, one, two, three, four wins on the spin, uh, including... Uh what is it? Two wins at their place, two wins at our place. So hopefully we can get back to winning ways again. I do have a graphic for the games against um, the games against them at Ewood Park. We'll look at that in a second. It's actually... I'm actually... Oh, my, 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 my slides are all over the shop. Um, but yeah, so so hopefully we can get back to winning ways and maybe put this last result against against them at the back of the mind. Because this is Mark Warburton. Mark Warburton seems to have got them scoring goals. They just maybe concede a bunch. Speaking of goals and all that kind of good stuff, let's take a look at uh, how we conceded our goals. We've conceded 22 goals through open play, six through set pieces, five through penalties, one counter-attack, and one OG. As for goals concede, uh, scored from Rovers, 25 of them are through open play, eight are set pieces, four own goals, and three penalties. As for the touches, 39% uh, of all our attacking avenues have come down the right-hand side, 34 down the left, 27 down the middle with 42% uh, of the action zones in the middle third. Our shots have come from 70% uh, 70, 70 through the middle and 59% within the 18-yard box. As for shots received, 62% through the middle and 51% within the 18-yard box. As for our visitors this weekend, they scored uh, 33 of their goals through open play, 8 through set pieces, 4 penalties and 1 OG. Uh, the goals conceded though, 29 through open play, 14 set pieces, 6 penalties and 2 counter-attack set pieces as where is that, Rovers? Use it. Use the force, Mowbray. As for their shots and stuff like that, 39% uh, of all their attacking uh, bits and pieces have come down that right-hand side. Um, and 42% of the action zones are in the middle third. As for their shots received, 65% through the middle and 54 within the 18-yard box. As for shots uh, attempted, 65% within the middle and 55% within the 18-yard box. That's the number crunching, boys. And I, st I spoke about it earlier. This is that uh, graphic um, against against QBR at Ewood Park. Five wins, one draw for Rovers. Unbeaten in at least six games at Ewood, uh, at Ewood Park against QBR. Um, when you have a quick scan of this... Look at that. Back in the day, in the 2011, Junior Hoylet scored. Not for QPR. He scored for Rovers. That's when he was a Rover. God, he was a good player. But uh, obviously, he went on to QPR for the money. Then he went to Cardiff. I think he might still be at Cardiff, if I'm honest with you. I don't know. Need to check it. Need to do a check up on him one of these days. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind a convincing two or three nil win against QPR this week. Uh, obviously, if if we can get Big Sam G. On form and getting him uh, scoring some goals regularly. You never know. We might have a we might have a bit of a strike force on our hands. I'm um, take a look at the the, the st strengths and weaknesses for both sides heading into this. Rovers strengths uh, creating long shot opportunities, defending set pieces, creating chances using through balls, and finishing scoring chances. As for our weaknesses, avoiding offside and protecting the lead. Our style of play is attack, play, playing out wide. Attacking through the middle, being very non-aggressive and rotating our first 11. As for QPR, their, their, their strengths are creating chances through individual skill, long shot opportunities and chances using through balls. They also uh, score, uh, they like to finish scoring chances, putting the ball in the back of the net, which is obvious, and stealing the ball from the opposition. However, their weaknesses are aerial duels and that is a strength for Rovers this season, believe it or not. Uh, avoiding individual errors, defending set pieces, avoiding fouling in dangerous errors, protecting the lead, defending against tacks down the wings, which we are good at in a point with Nyambe 
occasionally bell. Uh, as for their style of play, short passes, uh, they like to let their opponents play aggressively against us, which might suit us a little bit, but we've got to be ready for the counter. Aggressive, playing in their own half and playing the offside trap. Match forecast says Rovers will stray off the offside often and will score as a result of an opposition error. Let's hope so. Um, these are the key teams out in the championship at the moment in various categories. Possession, leads still lead the way, 59.7% on average uh, possession per game. Um, they also, uh, Fulham are not so far behind, Brentford, West Brom and QPR. Will they have the, the same amount of possession in this game at Ewa Park? Probably not. As for the most aggressive size, QPR are in that chart as well. Barnsley uh, lead the way, 68 yellows, one red. Charlton second, QPR third, 61 yellows, two reds. Uh, Huddersfield and Wigan make up the top five. Aerial duels, Rovers are in this one. 56% of all aerial duels won by West Brom. Birmingham are 55.8. Uh, Mill are in uh, third, 54.1. Rovers are in fourth, 52.8% of all aerial duels won. Bedford knock up the top five. As for shots per game, Leeds lead the way with, on average, 16.1 shots per game uh, out in the Championship. Brentford, Barnsley, Fulham and West Brom make up the top five. Pass accuracy, Fulham lead the way with 84.6% uh, pass succession. Uh, West Brom, Leeds, Brentford and Swansea make up the top five. And the ratings there is purely opinion-based, folks. Opinion-based, so don't, don't, get, don't get too excited about it. Um, this is what the table looks like, folks. It is wide flip been opened. Uh, West Brom and Leeds dropping points like it's hot at the moment uh, with only Leeds picking out of the two sides. Only Leeds winning one uh, the past five games. So West Brom need a result. Leeds need a result because Fulham are breathing down the neck. In fact, Fulham blew it um, just yesterday with a draw against Charlton. A win would have put them right on touching distance of top two. Uh, not Forest do have a game in hand on Fulham and maybe you can leapfrog them and get even closer themselves. Bradford are not out of it as well as are Preston. It is getting close. Uh, we can we might be able to start to believe. Uh, so Preston, Brentford, not in a Forest Fulham make up the top four or the, or the playoff spots. Down the bottom is Luton, Wigan and Barnsley going down. Uh, Barnsley on 24 points. They've made a surge, folks. There is a four-point gap between themselves and Stoke. Uh, QPR on 38 points they're a good 14 points uh, above the drop zone Rose up to 40th uh, 40 points on the board uh, just 6 points adrift we do have a game in hand on Preston um, as do pretty much everybody in the league a win for us this weekend we'll go to 43 points and potentially get into top 10 once again and then we could maybe because we got Borough next uh, they're down 17th. I just don't know about Borough at the minute they, they, they've turned a massive corner and they're on the rise they are on the rise Anyways, take a look at the games that are going to go on this next few days. It's a bit cluster fudge at the moment. Obviously, yesterday, Charlton Fulham duked out to a nil-nil draw. This Saturday's one and only game in the Championship is Stoke against Swansea. They have a whole host of fixtures going on on the Tuesday, including Cardiff against West Brom, Hull City against Huddersfield, the Battle of the H's. We're going to get Sheffield Wednesday in a bit of a Stevie Bruce derby. Uh, Leeds United against Millwall, Luton Town against Derby. Uh, Brentford against Nottingham Forest. Tough one, that one. Uh, both of those two sides duking out four top two, possibly playoffs, whatever. And Reading against Bristol City again. Again, uh, to formish sides. But the game of the week uh, will be at Rovers uh, against QPR, boys and girls. Now, if you want to know who the top goal scorer is at the moment in the championship, here we go, boys. It is Mitrovic and Watkins duke it out. Top spot with 18 goals apiece. Uh, Grabin and Bowen are in joint third, you would say. Naki Wells is up there in fifth. Is he still a QPR player? Tell me in the comment section down below. Fletcher, Grant, Mbembo, uh, Bamford and Jigodjigowitz uh, down there in the top 10. As for the most uh, aggressive players, Tommy Lawrence is in there with 11 yellows. Of a drink driver. Uh, uh, that's below the belt. Below the belt. Editor, take that out. In fact, fuck it. Leave it in there. Uh, next up, uh, key assist makers. Eliasson's in there with 10 uh, assists. Perez got 10. Brown has an 8. Uh, Wallace from Mill has 8. And Swifty Boy has 7. Uh, as for the ratings, again, it's purely opinion based. That, my friends, is where it's at. Uh, hopefully, you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash that thumbs up. If you're new, smash the subscribe button, boys and girls. Bing bam, today with all things Blackman Rovers related, championship related. Whoa, boop, 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 here. Under Waruski. And before you go, make sure you check out the description. Links to my other social media platforms are in there. I'm very, very vocal on Twitter. I do do the old Facebook. There is the Patreon in there. You can check that sucker out. You can become a Patreon for less than a. Instant cup of coffee. I'm talking like 75 pence, boys. You can become a patron to the gang and put a big old smile on my face and be able to kick on. You can be uh, a key reason while this channel goes above and beyond in the next year or so. Because that's the focus, boys. We're going to try and push this baby to another level with your support. That would be absolutely mental. Anyway, folks, um, obviously, transfer windows open for another seven or eight days. Some new faces could come into both QPR and Rovers. But we'll keep an eye on the Rovers' stakes over the next week and see what happens. I believe we'll, we'll get a couple players in. I just don't know what areas they're going to be. Would it be a goalkeeper? I'd like to see a goalkeeper, a defender, 
an attacking midfielder as well. I think with Gallagher, Graham, Armstrong, we've got goals in our team. The winger is, is you know, if we can have uh, Armstrong on the left, a winger on the right, we can stick Gallagher up top, and then we've got something there. We've got a bit of a shape. Uh, and then we've got other t players coming in. We've got Chapman, we've got Costello, Ranky Costello. We've got other players, Buckley as well, youngsters knocking on the door, getting in, in, in a little bit Brereton as well, which we, we haven't, you know, seen the, the best out of him at all. Um, so, that, that, you know, we have the makings. We've got the tools and the ingredients. Hopefully we can we can just add a couple of little splatters uh, this next week to, to shore up the defence, get a kind of goalkeeper to compete with with Walton. Say, you know what, Walton, this guy, this McLaughlin fella, he's pretty savvy and he, he can have a go at number one jersey, buddy. Anyway, until then, I'm going to let you get out of here. Smash the thumbs up, smash the subscribe. I'll see you next time. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit the subscribe button to keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers related, championship related, Football related. We've got it all covered right under one roof. And while I still have you, please be sure to check out some of the old videos scattered along here. I hope.